Who told you to sit down? Nani aliwambia mketi? All right, stand up for us. One second, one second. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we lift our hands to Jesus right now and tell him? Thank you, Lord. Asante, yes. All right. Lift your hands, just wave your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm ready for anything you want for me. I'm going to have everything you want in my life. I command it so in the name of Jesus. Turn and give your neighbor a high five million and tell him, hey. Turn to the other person, give him another high five billion and say, hey. All right, you may be seated. God bless you. I, I heard the Lord speak to me yesterday. Jana. And uh, it was very profound what he said to me. Na ilikuwa na uzito mwingi alipo ninenea. And I'm going to release this right now. Lift your hands right Na now. Very powerful. A very powerful prophetic word. Neno la kiunabi. And we find the scripture in the book of Joel chapter 2. Verses 25. Yohana wa pili, mstari wa rubaini na tano. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. And the scripture talks about a reformation and a restoration of what was stolen from you. I prophesy that everything that has been taken away from your life, everything the devil and his ugly friends have done to you, are, is going to be erased completely from your life, also from your memory, and it's going to be like it never ever happened. Someone lift your hands and say, Praise the Lord. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Everybody watching online, all around the world, my friends and partners, I prophesy. Yeah, you're going to see in these days the manifestation. Now, yesterday the Lord spoke to me this word. He said, restoration. And I know that may be a word that a lot of people speak about, but I don't uh, say it often. So I hear God, and then I deliver exactly what he says. And today, the Lord went like this to me, like he's nodding his head. And he says, son... Do you understand that this is really going to happen? Lift your hands. You know, God can speak and you receive it by faith and you go, yeah, that's great. I got it. But then the Lord says, watch now. Can I tell you? I, I, you know, it's not just something to make people shout about receiving a lot of things. But God is about to manifest his promises to us like we've never seen before. Everything is coming into view. Everything is coming into manifestation. This is the day and the hour, the Lord says, when I'm going to begin to cause the breakthroughs to come like you've never seen before. I want to talk to leaders. I want to talk to people. I want to talk to people that want to achieve great things in a moment. But I want to deal with this thing about restoration right now. He said, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Verse 25. Yes? And he said, my great army is among you. And he said, you're going to eat in plenty and be satisfied. I saw this word here, the great army, and I can say, where are they? Can I tell you, they're coming into position. You can't succeed by yourself. You need a group of people. You need a troop of people. You need teams of people. No man or no woman can succeed by themselves. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive the people that are coming to me. The best of the best from the north, south, east, and the west. From everywhere, the best of the best from the north, south, east, and the west. From everywhere, I receive them. For wherever they are, they're coming. I'm coming to them and they're coming to me. Nothing shall stop them from being in my in my bosom, in my place anymore. Nothing will stop me from meeting them and connecting this thing even all over the earth. For the Lord says, do you not know 
that this land is mine, says the Lord. This land is mine, and this land is yours because I put you here. And God says, I have given to my own servants and elect the whole earth because the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. The world and all they that dwell therein are mine, says the Lord. Lift your hands. Everything is mine. Everything is mine because everything is his. And because he's ordained me to walk in power, to walk in dominion, to walk in a successful realm of life, everything belongs to me. Lift your hands right now. Now, I, I understand uh, many things that are taught in the church, but I want to deal with one thing. Total victory belongs to us. Complete victory Complete dominion, complete power, complete rulership, complete authority. Can you say amen to that? Complete li living over the top of everything else in this world. I will never take a microphone in my life, God forbid, or I should resign the ministry and open up and start talking about Everything that's wrong and bad. No, we have victory over it. Lift your hands. We're to preach the truth of the power of dominion, creative power and authority. Amen. We don't deny the forces of evil. We don't deny the, the problems that people have. But are we preaching that or are we preaching Jesus? Is Jesus the victor or is he the victim? He's the victor. He overcame everything for us. And this is the day when the church needs to understand that the devil has only one place, and that's under our feet. Put your foot down and say, Shaitani is Shinwe. Come on, do it again. Say, Shaitani is Shinwe. And you and your ugly friends. Say, you and your ugly friends. Come on, point at the devil. You know, the scripture says, is this the one that deceived the nations? Look at you, you ugly thing. Lift your hands to God and say, Lord Jesus, you're beautiful, but the devil is ugly. The demons are ugly. They're monstrous, ugly creatures. They're worthless. They're useless. They're stupid. And they're defeated forever. Put your foot down again. Your other one. Right, left, right, left. Let's go like the army marching. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Say, hey, 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 hey. There you are. There you are. There you are. Yoka. Tokahapa and Yoka. You idiot. Tell him he's an idiot. Go ahead. Tell him, you idiot, you dumb demon. Get out of here. Tokahapa Kwenduuko. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Shout to Jesus. Shout to Jesus if you know you have the victory. <laughs> oh, yes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but what? The Lord delivers us out of them all. Not a few. Every problem we ever have, we already have the victory. And I came to prophesy this afternoon because the Lord spoke to me so clearly. Lift your hands. I'm bringing restoration to my people, to my church. My church is going to be elevated in the land of Kenya. He said in the scripture here, I saw it in Joel chapter 2. O land, O land, he prophesied even to the land. I love the scripture that says, O earth, O earth, O earth, hear the word of the Lord. We speak to the earth. It's ours. It belongs to us. I want to prophesy to people that you're going to have your own companies. You're going to have your own land. You're going to have your own houses. You're going to have your own vehicles. You're going to have your own teams of people. You're going to have your own operations. You're going to have the best of everything on this earth. In the name of Jesus, it belongs to you. And the devil can't do anything to stop it. Somebody shout. I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, somebody shout if you receive it. Say, I receive from you, my father. Oh, yes. From you, my father. The angels of the Lord are moving here right now. There's no demons that can be here. No, they're not here. Bye-bye. Quaherini. Quaheri if it's one, quaherini if it's a few. Adios means Spanish, means get out of here. The old song, hit the road, Jack, don't you come back no more. Can I tell you something amazing? When I was um, getting ready to leave the house, 
a while ago, a few hours ago, and I, <laughs> I, I looked in the mirror for a second and I saw an angel stand right there between me and the mirror. I thought this is impossible because the, in physical space, there's only so much space between me physically and the mirror and my reflection back. But the angel of the Lord flashed right there. I thought, he's, it's like they're in the mirror. They're in the bathroom. Lift your hands. The angels of the Lord. 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 Some of you don't even know that. They're with us everywhere we go. When I'm in my television studio, I see flashes of light. Every time I turn the cameras on to broadcast, the angels show up. Lift your hands. We don't have to live in a place of, full of demons and despair and problems. We're living amongst the angels. And the presence of the Holy Ghost gives us the victory. Lift your hands right now. I want to I put this in your mind and your spirit that you have the victory. Walk around Nairobi like that. They say no devil can be here. No devil has any place in my house. Lift your hands. The devil has no place in my body, not in my mind, not on my, behind me, around me, where I am. He's nowhere. He's only one place. And where is that? Yeah, right here. That's it. Get that in your spirit. Get that in your mind. I had one prophet in America who's a very powerful man of God. I believe in him. But his newsletters... We're always sending out all the bad news. I subscribe to the newsletter and I read. It's everything bad going on in the world. I unsubscribed. I said, I can't be reading this garbage. I'm sorry. If I saw him, I'd say, brother, I love you, man. But please fix your beard a little bit. His beard is always... You know people that let their beard grow all over their face? Like a caveman, you know? <laughs> like a Neanderthal man. <laughs> hey, the hair is here. The hair is here. Come on, fix it a little bit, you see, yesterday I did that. I had even, I was in the salon and I had somebody fix it so it doesn't stick out everywhere, you know. And, uh, and stop, stop putting out all this bad news. The devil wants you to advertise for him. He wants you to speak the bad things that are going on. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? He wants you to keep talking about him. Can I tell you a secret to, for deliverance also? Instead of casting them out, which is part of it, just ignore them. Look at your neighbor and say, ignore the devil. Look at your neighbor and say, ignore them. Ignore them. Ignore. I-G-N-O-R-E. They're not there. Lift your hands. Now, if you see one, cast them out. Yes? If you see one, cast them out. If you feel oppression, break the power of darkness is by speaking to it. Oh, yes, we're in the world. There's evil everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's sinners, there's wrong, there's corruption, there's demonic entities, there's demonic influence. We're living in the world. Why God let us live with them, I don't understand it. But I know one thing. I have power over them all. Lift your hands. Let's pray. Come on. I want to move into the next session here, the next section of this. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Say, I have, say, Lord, I have power over them all. Luke 10, 19 says, you tread upon them and nothing will ever hurt you. Lift your hands. We have power. We're seated in Ephesians 1, high above all principalities and power and rulers of darkness in this world. We're above them. They're not above us. We're above them. We're seated in heavenly places. One thing, yes, Lord, I just see, the, I just see, I'm seeing a vision right now. I see this. What the Lord gave me this uh, understanding about, about the order of spiritual beings. Number one is God. Say God. Number one is God. Number two is human. Number two is me. Number three is angels. And number four are demons and Satan. Oh, yes. The ranking in the spirit. Number one is God. Someone shout, God, you're the boss. You're number one of everything. Number two is me. 
And what, how can I say that? And number three is the angels. You know why the angels are lower than us? Because they're ministers to the heirs of salvation, which is us. Praise the Lord. So an angel can't be above us in spiritual hierarchy or rank if they're our servants. The Bible calls them our servants. Lift your hands. Some of the angels are standing around. They don't know what to do because we don't give God uh, the, the petition to release them. I don't want to say that we need to talk to angels. Hey, angel, do this, do that. I don't see that in Scripture. But we can talk to the Lord and say, Lord, cause your ministering spirits to go and work on my behalf. Everything that you would have them doing for me, I receive it. Let them be busy working for me. And the last order of spiritual beings is the poor devil. Poor devil. Poor demons. Defeated forever because they made the biggest mistake to rebel against Jehovah. But we're not rebels. Lift your hands. We're servants. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord right now. We're oko shekelayate. Oh yes. It's going to take me into what I'm going to talk to leaders and ministers about right now. Right now. Right now. I wanted to get just flow right into it. I feel the glory here right now. I'm feeling I'm in a, in a realm of the glory right now. Lift your hands. You could feel wherever you are. This whole place is being saturated by the touch of heaven. Father, I prophesy over this, this part of the city of Nairobi that the churches will rise here and break every demonic force. That the churches will rise here and begin to cause new things to happen in the land. I thank you, Lord, for people being blessed in this town, blessed in this area, blessed in this part of the city, the eastern part of the city, that there's going to be great changes here, that people will build things here. Man of God, you'll build the church that I spoke to about last time. You'll build it. I don't know if it'll be right here, but God says the land is coming for you. The property is coming for you. You're going to begin to see the way forward because this place is already too small God says, I already have, I'm thinking about the plan of expansion of how you're going to move to the bigger places. And I pray and prophesy that this is going to happen for many servants of God in the city of Nairobi because Kenya is now becoming a place of revival. Somebody clap your hands and believe. Believe it. Believe the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. A revival has been released in the air. It's been released in the realm of the spirit. The winds of the Spirit are blowing in Kenya and across East Africa. And God's going to break every demonic force. It's like their heads are being smashed and crushed by the power of God. Lift your hands. The devil shouldn't be floating around everywhere deceiving people and oppressing people and all the things. And I know they work through witchcraft and all of that. But you, we have power over all of that. I prophesy that every person that's trying to do witchcraft against God's people, repent or die. Repent or leave the earth. We have no time for your nonsense and your foolishness. Whatever has been spoken against our destiny, we take those words and grab them and throw them back upon the forces of darkness and let them be the ones to suffer the consequences of evil. We as God's sons and daughters you as a daughter, me as a son, if you're a lady or a man, you are, we are not the consumers of evil. We're not going to eat the fruits of evil. Lift your hands right now. Nothing evil can remain in me. This is a, a part of consecration, purification, empowerment. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's like a wind from heaven is blowing over the land. Father, I prophesy over the city of Nairobi that it will become the greatest the greatest it's ever been. I see such a great glory coming in the land of Kenya all across. And cities are being made. Eldoret was just made a city. Nakuru was made a city. I prophesied this some years ago about cities being raised up. Whole uh, commercial cities that were never there before. Nakuru, now the city. Eldoret, now the city. There are many others coming. And Nairobi, the great metropolis. The great city that God has Put together and he's building to go to uh, even a greater place than we've ever seen. Lift your hands. You're supposed to be the richest person. You're supposed to be the most successful person. You're supposed to be the most powerful person. You're supposed to be the most brilliant person. You're, the supposed, to, you're supposed to be the most favored, highly favored person of anybody in the land. You, you, not somebody else. You, 
And these are going to be the days, says the Lord, when the testimonies are going to come like fire of manifestations of my glory because these are the days when I'm going to manifest great power, the rebuke of evil, the restoration of what's been stolen, and it's going to begin to cause change that will be tangible. And the manifestation, you, you, you won't be able to stay in the same house. Lift your hands. You won't be able to stay in the same uh, company of people that are not doing good things. You just begin to walk. You begin to walk. God's going to elevate people. Start to work on your mind by your visual, visual imagination. Look at big things and say, Lord, if people in the world have that, I can also have it. And you don't have to live by corruption to get blessed. You can work with the laws of God. I don't have time to teach on that, but if I'm coming another time or whatever I'll be, I, I, I love to teach on this. You ask God, how can I become rich? How can I become powerful? How can I become successful? There are ways to do it by the laws of God. And, of course, they all come from the word of God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. I want to move into this dimension. The Lord spoke to me. Two things I told you. Number one, yesterday he said restoration is coming to my people. Uh, there's a lot more I could say, but for, I'll just leave, it, I'll leave that where it is. You can read into that yourself. Number two, today he said, my son, do you even realize that the manifestation is right at the door? The real big things that you've been believing for are at the door. The things that I've had you standing for and crying for and praying for and waiting for and prophesying to the four winds of the Spirit and pushing things out there and being faithful and persevering through every trial and hardship, through every oppression, through every sadness, through every kind of issue, every kind of problem that you've encountered along the way. God says you've been perseverant and I'm not I'm not, in Ephesians, yes, Lord, Hebrews 6.10, I'm not unjust to forget your labor of love. I'll reward you. I will reward you. Hebrews 10.35 to 38 says, cast not away your confidence, for it has recompense of great reward, and the, the just shall live by their faith. I don't go by what I see. I go by what I believe. And God says, now you're going to see what you have believed. Number two, you got it? Lift your hand. Say, I got it. Restoration is coming to me. Prophesy to yourself. Agree with the word of the Lord. Amos 3, 7 says, surely the Lord God will do nothing except he first reveal the secret to his servant, the prophet. Verse 8, he said that a lion has roared in the, field, in the city. Who shall not fear? And then he said, the Lord has spoken, verse 8, who then can but prophesy? In other words, the voice speaks and we're supposed to echo the voice. So when God speaks, you can say aloud, I receive restoration. Say it. I receive according to your word, the word of your prophet. Yes, I receive restoration in my life. Everything stolen is coming back seven times. Everything the devil did against me is coming back to me. Everything anybody took from me, I'm receiving it back. Yesterday I saw one of my cars. Very interesting experience I had. Well, it's a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Black on black, custom, AMG. I saw it. I won't say more details. I, I even was talking to the government about it. It's, a, it's, quite a, it's quite an interesting story. I won't tell the whole thing now. But I thought, this is something that I had. Lift your hands. This is something that I had, that I owned. Mine. Paid for, cash. No debt, no loan. Title deed, logbook, whatever you want to call it. Many things like that. But the Lord says... Do you think that was something? I said, no, it's even old. I want a newer one. The house I'm in, I'll have a better one. Whatever I thought I fought along the way, I'll have more of it right now. Lift your hands. It's coming. Number two, the Lord said, manifestation is here. It's right at the door. And we're going to have it. Lift your hands and pray. Shakarinte le saito. The third thing the Lord spoke to me. Third thing the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, tell my people 
and I don't have time to do it here today. I'll do it in another service. But uh, about some of the spiritual experiences you've had, visions you've had, times that God's caught me up to heaven, times the Lord has appeared to me, and uh, what he told me and what he taught me and what he showed me. And he said, tell the ministers, lift your hands, all you preachers that are here, some are here to get ordained. I see you wearing your white clothes. God bless you. One, two, three, four. Lift your hand if you're one of those. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Everybody else, yes. How many? Thirty-five. Some of you forgot to wear white. And I'm wearing blue. I don't, I'm not going to wear white. So, okay. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So wherever you are, lift your hands and wave to Jesus and say, Lord, I receive this right now. I want to tell you how to be a part. You asked this, Pastor. I believe, I believe, I, I love the question you asked. How do you become a powerful minister? How do you become a successful minister of the gospel? And it applies to business. It applies to your career. It applies to everything. How do I become successful? How? How? Someone say How? And they go like this, like you want me to answer. Let me see your hand on your ear right now. Say, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Come on, I want to know, I want to know. Say, I want to know. How do you say that in Swahili? I want to know. Thank you. I'm learning more. You could teach me more. I want to write them down. What? I got it, I got it, yes. Hallelujah. And I'm learning money verses like, Johapa Nipi Pesa, my money's coming to me now. Come here. Praise the Lord. You didn't like that one. Lift your hands. Oh, I didn't say it right. Say, I am very rich. How do you say I'm very rich? I wrote it down. I don't have time to look, go to my phone. Tell me, I am very rich. I learned it in Swahili. I have it in my phone, but I don't, I, I don't have time to go looking through my notes right now. But it's there. Everything is mine. Go like this. Everything is mine. But it starts in the realm of the spirit. It starts in the realm of the spirit. I want to tell you how you could be a powerful minister. And it will set you apart from everybody else. Only one thing. Being touched by heaven. Lift your hands. Touched by the glory of God. God touching you and filling you with his own nature and power. That's it. And then everybody, and then you learn his word, and you flow in your gift, and you flow in the grace that he gives you. You flow in the office that he's put you into, and you just let it go, 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 go. And you keep going, no matter what devil shows up, no matter what you fight, no matter what obstacles you have, no matter what problems you see, no matter what warfare you have, no matter how sad or depressed you may feel over situations that have gone on that were evil and bad, you just keep going, you just keep going. So that realm of perseverance, it'll make you successful. But the first thing is to be touched by the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me in 1986. And then again throughout several times in the next few years. And then again in 1996. And that's when I began to travel the world. To the nations of the world. It came by the Lord's appearance. Everything disappeared and Jesus was there and he began to talk to me and tell me what he's called me to do. In 1986, right after I got saved, the Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, my son, he laid his hands on my head in an open vision. He said, I have, I'm, he said, my son Thomas, I'm commissioning you and ordaining you as my prophet to the nations. At the time, I didn't know what that was. My family, none of us were Christians. We weren't born again. We didn't know any of this stuff. But the Lord came and touched me. And he's taken me around the world and he's anointed me. Do you understand that? I don't say that to my own credit. I say that to be a role model, a model for you. A model for you. Anything he's done in my life, he can do for you. If he can touch you in the same way that he touched me. Let's pray right now. Let's get a hold of this right now in the spirit. I just don't want to give a lesson and a teaching or a prophecy even or a message. I want you to catch it in the spirit. If I say it and you hear it, that's good. You've learned something, but how about the manifestation of it? Lift your hands. Father, I declare and I decree over your servants and your people that they will have heavenly visitations. 
They will have a direct one-on-one -on -one encounter with you. Holy Spirit, schedule the encounter that you have for them. Let them be, begin to submit to it. Let them have the time where they can hear you and see you and know you and connect with you directly. The Bible says we have many teachers, but not many fathers, but also we have teachers and we have the offices, but it's the Lord himself who directs it all. And when you get direct to him, now you receive something. And he will give you something that no one else has. Lift your hand and say, Lord, my unique calling, my specific gift, show me exactly what it is. Teach me how to prosper in my way by taking heed according to your word and your will. What, what that thing is that you've ordained for me that no one else does like I do. This is what I need to work on. Your uniqueness is your significance, not your similarity to somebody else. If you're just like someone else, hello? If you talk the same, preach the same, sing the same. I hear that a lot in the Kenyan church. Same song, same sound, same thing. I'm like, what's different about this one than that one? I want to see the unique place. One thing about this place is very unique. Lift your hands. I want to say about this church. It's very unique. <laughs> it's a very unique place. It's not like any place else. And I want to commend you for that. I want to compliment you for that. Yes. Oh, yes. Pastor. Wow. Prophet of God. This place is not like any pla other place. And it's already too small. Lift your hands and say, we're, we're, we're moving. We're going to the bigger place. Oh, yes. So you want to be unique. Say, I must be unique. U-N-I-Q-U-E is the word. Unique. If you wanted to make it an African word, you would spell it U-N-I-C. For short. Uni. Unique. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, Lord, my special gift and talent is what's going to take me around the world. And to you be all the glory. Number two, you want to give God all the glory. You never want to take any credit to yourself for anything he does. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Always know that it's him doing the miracle, not you. Always know that he's doing it, not you. Lift your hands. I got it. Yes, Lord. Just put your two hands out right now. I don't know if I can walk down here. I just feel, I just feel something happening right now. Father, I'm going to close because I know the time is gone. You've been here a long time. I, I, I think I've said a lot in a few moments, yes? But I want to release this fire unto you, especially you preachers, especially, and also you people that are going to be business people. Lift your hands up if you want to have a successful business. You want to be in business. You want to make a lot of money. For several reasons. You want to be blessed yourself. You want to be blessed for the church. You want to be blessed to advance the kingdom. You want to be blessed for your family. You want to enjoy the best of life. God wants you to have all of that. He's not afraid. Never be ashamed about the blessing of God. If you're going to drive the best car. I had a vision this morning. I shouldn't probably say this. Maybe I shouldn't say it. I saw a vision of many cars. I saw the car... I saw the Mercedes yesterday I told you about. That was mine. And, uh, and uh, I didn't see it in a vision. I saw it physically in reality. It was, I saw it in reality. And, uh, I, and this morning I was just seeing these vehicles, one after the other, the best of everything. Do you know, don't be ashamed of that. Don't be afraid that someone will hate you for being rich. Lift your hands. Tell them to take a hike. Go like this. Let me teach you a prayer. <laughs> you, you know the Catholic prayer? They do this. And, and for the Italian Pope, for the, for the Italians, I like to add this. Oh. I did that in Paris, France. And this lady, this French lady was in the church, and I was on the way out, and she yelled across from them all the way in the back of this big church. She said, hey, prophet, 
with her French accent. Hey, prophet! I went, I turned, I said, yeah? She said, she went like this. <laughs> As I did that in the church. I thought, oh, I'm teaching people funny things. Lift your hands. But you got to tell the people, tell the, tell the devil, tell his friends, don't care. Just go like this again. If you don't like me, have a nice day. You know that? If you don't like my blessing, ask the boss who gave it to me. It's his business and my business. Lift your hand and say, I'm going to be blessed. When I say that, I'm preparing you to be blessed because when you get it, that people will hate you for being blessed. The Bible says the blessing comes, but then with persecution. People won't understand, but just be blessed anyway. Lift your hand and say, I'm going to have the best car, whatever I want to drive. Just imagine right now which car you'll have. Range Rover, big Mercedes, which one? Bentley, Rolls Royce, which one? Whatever it is, Land Cruiser, which one you want? Limousine. I don't know about these roads here, but you can try. Defender, you know that Defender, the off-road car? Lift your hands and just see it right now. See yourself in the best house. Living in the best house with beautiful, you know, chandeliers like this, nice lights. Beautiful table, beautiful carpet, beautiful artwork. Be you know, go gold-covered uh, gold uh, silverware if you want, you know. Nice colors. Come on. How the people are clapping. You, you got to catch. Whatever you want to have, whatever you like. I, I want to prophesy to you in a practical way. Whatever you like, God also likes it for you. He, he doesn't need it for himself because he's not on the earth. He's in heaven. In fact, when you get to heaven and see all that he has, you'll be like the queen of Sheba. Ah, oh, I'm fainting. She saw Solomon and she passed out. A queen who was rich herself saw Solomon and she collapsed. Like you guys here in the church, you're falling down, right? I don't want to do it. Let me. Okay. She went. Out. Because Solomon's life was so amazing, she couldn't handle it. How many know God has that for you in Nairobi, Kenya, like he had it in Israel with Solomon? If you can believe. If you can believe. So, Father, I thank you right now for the touch of heaven coming upon me. Say it. So, Father, I thank you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the touch of God coming upon me. Fill my life with your glory. Fill my life with your provision. Fill my life with riches and treasures. Fill my life with every good thing. Take me away from every person that's ruining my, my, my walk. Take me out of this environment of everything that's evil and bad. And take me up into your presence. And fill me with the presence of heaven. Jesus said the model prayer, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Let's keep praying right now for a minute. I'm going to drop this mic because I know time is, time is uh, elapsed on us a little bit. But how many would like me to come again and continue? How many would like me to come again and continue? Yeah, because we don't have time for it all today, but we're doing what we can right now. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you for the presence of heaven in every person's life. Each individual preacher, each individual business leader, each individual person that wants to step up to the next place in you, let them be filled with your power, filled with your presence, filled with your glory. Let's lift our hands. The sweet presence of the heaven is here. Can you feel? Can you feel something in the atmosphere? Can you feel? Dr. William, I prophesy that God is going to elevate you and take you to a place in a realm of taking dominion that you've waited for for a long time. But the Lord says, now that day is upon you. The renovation, the restoration, the, 
the revival, the reformation, all of it happening in you. And God's going to lift you, my son. The Lord's going to lift you, the Lord says. The Lord calls you his son. His son you are. God's going to take you and lift you up. Thank you, Lord, for your pastor here in this church. We just lift them up in the spirit, in the presence of heaven, that we be filled with the glory and taken to higher heights. All of you servants and preachers here, just receive right now. The Holy Ghost is walking through this place. The angels are here. And God is going to begin to uh, take you to higher heights. Now, uh, the next phase of the time to uh, ordain the, the pastors, I'll give it back to Dr. William, and he will instruct on how to do that right next. But I think I've finished my part. Lift it. Yes. Clap your hands to Jesus and thank him. Give God a good one. That was kind of quiet. That was a little bit. Come on, shout. Say, woo! Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Yes. This is wonderful. I'm in heavenly places right now, I'm telling you. Look at this baby. Hey, baby. How you doing there, sweetheart? She's dancing through there. Look at that. There she goes. Let's wave to the Lord. Can you feel? Can you feel the atmosphere? Can you feel? Can you feel? Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm and I'm being empowered. And I'm being restored, and I'm being made rich, and I'm being made successful, and everything I touch will prosper, and everything I do will succeed, and all good things are going to happen in my life. Nothing bad, nothing evil, only good things, because the Lord has me in the palm of his hand. And here I am, Lord, right here. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's give the Lord a praise. I love you. Hallelujah. Let me have one African lady. Give me the woo. How are you doing? Yay. What, what's, what's that thing that you African ladies do? Come on. Can you do it? Hey, 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 hey. This is, this is awesome. What is this maize meal? It's okay, but I would rather have a whole table filled with all kinds of exotic food. Lift your hands. That day has to come. You set the table, and the chefs come with the big hats. Chop, chop, let's go. Come in, set the table. I have this, I have this, I have this, I have this. Everything that I want. Lift your hands. That's, that's, a, that's a possibility. And it's a reality that we need to claim in Jesus' name. Amen. Just just say, Lord, I love you. Let's, let's blow Jesus a kiss. Blow me one, too. Blow me one. I need some love right now. Give me a good one. Come on. Woo. Woo. I feel the love. I feel, I feel the love. Thank you, Dr. William. Can we give the Lord a hand and clap for him? Dr. William Wealth. And he has a Nigerian name. I have to get his Nigerian name correct. Let's give the Lord a hand, a hand of praise for him. And for our pastor, the prophet. Let's give the Lord a, a hand clap for our pastor, the prophet. And uh, while I was speaking last time, he had an amazing vision that I would really like him to tell that testimony on television. If we could do it sometime, I really would like to hear. But uh, lift your hands. Say, I'm going to have my own testimony. Say, I don't have to care about everybody else's testimony. I'm going to have my own testimony. And you preachers, you're going to have your own church and churches. You're going to have your own offices, I prophesy. You're going to have your own teams of people. You're going to have everything working well for you in the name of Jesus. And you going into business, I keep feeling pulled in the spirit. 
business people, lift your hands again one more time. I release the fire of the spirit of creativity for entrepreneurship upon you. And those of you watching, wherever you are, if you're a preacher or if you're going into business, your business will succeed, your ministry will succeed, and everything you do will prosper, and every door that's been closed against you is opening. God is opening the doors. You're going to have too many doors, I prophesy. You're not going to have just a few, uh, too, too many or too little. You're going to have too many that you, you got to pick where, which day you're going to go where. Lift your hands. Because people will love you for the grace of God in your life. All right, I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you. God bless you, everybody.